Hello, this is Ken Ningxie speaking. In this section, I will be talking about the component of the single cell, especially the key component, uh, the major component which would uh, com carry out the electrochemical reaction. We call it MEA, the membrane electro assembly. Uh, for the different type of fuel cell, the recommended fuel cell, solid oxide fuel cell, they may slightly different the, the material use or the, um, the, the structure, but uh, the basically the principle is the same. So in this section uh, uh, and the following section, I'm going to use the pen fuel cell as an example. Proton exchange membrane fuel cell uh, as an example to describe the basic structure and the principle uh, of the single cell. So over here, the first uh, first section I will describe the key component uh, of a single cell inside uh, many is a MEA before doing that um, we're going to talk about the catalyst because uh, the catalyst is um, the key component or the key material which really carry out the electrochemical region of the fuel cell for the catalyst we as we mentioned it will be uh, speed up the electrochemical reaction speed it up uh, but itself do not really do any changes the catalyst uh, what we need uh, over here is um, over here you can see uh, is a red means uh, the catalyst um, many is a platinum and then the size of the platinum somewhere around two to five nanometer it's a deposit on the carbon powder. The size of carbon powder is somewhere around 50 to 150 nanometer. And it is surrounded by electrolyte. The electrolyte is actually the nephew ionomer who is saturated with water, so able to conduct the, the proton or the H plus ion. The hydrogen going to um, coming out from outside and then diffuse or migrate to the catalyst surface. On the catalyst surface, the hydrogen will be oxidized as a proton, H+, plus, and then leave the surface. And also, it will release two electrons. And the electron will be conducted through the carbon powder, because the carbon powder itself is a, uh, electronic conductive. So from the hydrogen oxidation reaction on the anode, uh, actually, the hydrogen is in a gas phase, and uh, the proton, the H plus, uh, can be transported in the aqueous solution, aqueous phase, and the electron can be carried out only by at the solid phase. So actually, you really think of the hydrogen proton this region, the catalyst has been located at a gas, aqueous, and solid interface. These three phase coexist the place, then this reaction can take in place. In reality, it's really difficult to create an environment which is three-phase coexist. So in reality, actually the hydrogen is dissolved into an aqueous liquid, the water. Hydrogen actually dissolved in the water and then transferred uh, uh, through to the catalyst surface. And um, on the oxygen, reduction on the cathode side, the oxygen will be reduced into water it combined with the incoming hydrogen proton and the electron. The oxygen also is supposed to be in ideally is a gas phase and the proton transport through the aqueous phase, <laughs> the liquid phase, and the electron is conducted by the solid phase. So even in a cathode, oxygen reduction reaction, the catalyst also had to be located at the gas, liquid, and solid three-phase co three coexist place. In reality, it's not dif difficult to achieve that. So actually, oxygen is dissolved into the liquid water as the aqueous phase, and then from outside is transferred, migrate or through the diffusion to the catalyst surface and uh, is combined with a proton and the uh, electron and uh, reduced into the water. The water is supposed to be the, in the liquid phase, but uh, at the fuel operation temperature such, such as uh, 60 to 80 degrees, some of the liquid 
water will be evaporated as a gas phase and then diffuse out the, the fuel cell. So this is the catalyst. Now, the catalyst we had to be used is a platinum. Why we need a platinum? That's because uh, first, the reactivity, we have considered the reactivity. We had to generate ele enough electricity at a given surface area. So we need a highly reactive uh, uh, catalyst. Usually the platinum will be the best. Palladium or the gold or other cobalt will be good also. But uh, for the iron or copper, it might be good. But uh, if you consider the second condition, corrosion reduced because the fuel cell like a pen fuel cell it's a very acidic environment the electrolyte ph value is somewhere close to zero equivalent to 0.05 molar sulfuric acid so any uh, substance had to sustain the, at this environment you probably had to be use noble metal such as platinum gold or palladium such kind of metal like a copper or the iron will be dissolved. And also make situation worse. The fuel cell operate at relative high temperature. I mean high temperature is somewhere around 60 to 90 degrees. So make it more corrosive. Uh, you got to use a platinum or gold or palladium, noble metal for the catalyst. Otherwise it will dissolve. And uh, also had the electric field. But uh, on the electrical surface, there's the electrical potential. This it has a potential of such a 1.1 volt, might be uh, accelerated the corrosion rate, maybe 10 times or 100 times fold because of existing of the electric potential. So consider all this, uh, the catalyst for the pen fuel cell had to be used uh, platinum catalyst. If, for instance, like a solid oxide fuel cell, they operate at 800 degrees, the higher temperature, the electrochemical ratio is much faster. So it might be can get rid of the platinum, use cobalt, nickel, they'll be sufficient. In the alkaline solution, uh, maybe the corrosion is much less. You might use a nickel or cobalt as a catalyst, also be fine. But uh, in uh, such a uh, this temperature range, you had to consider relative uh, reaction activity. The platinum is the first choice. But the platinum is very expensive. So how you can make it most out of that? The one reason, one way to is to try to uh, make a nano size catalyst. If you consider a, a platinum, uh, this a, a chunk of platinum. The volume of platinum is uh, 4 over 3 pi r3 cubic, uh, the r. And then the area is 4 pi r square for this uh, large uh, platinum particle. If uh, we try to use a nano size, chop, uh, cut the platinum uh, into a very nano size particle. In that case, the volume of the, those nanoparticles is 4 over 3 pi r cubic and times the n. n is the number of the particle, nano size particle. And the area of the nano size particle equal to 4 pi n r square. But for the, uh, for the, if we want to know how much area increase from the uh, particle from this uh, to the nano size because the nanotechnology we can uh, do the following calculation. Because the volume of the platinum do not increase or decrease, they're supposed to remain the same. We just uh, particle make it a small particle, become a nano size particle, that's all. So the V is supposed to be the same. The large volume is equal to a small volume. So in this case, we can able to calculate an and the number of nanoparticles equal to the large r divided by small r uh, cubic over here. So we can substitute n in, into this, uh, so we can see how much area increase by nano size the, the catalyst particle. We compare the large a to the small a. And so this one we can do it by this uh, substitute the n in, into the small a, the area into here, and then eventually convert it into the 
uh, the size, the ratio of small a to the large a equal to the large r divided by small r. If the large r here is a one centimeter radius, and then the small uh, nano size particle is a 10 nanometer. In this case, the surface area, just because of nano size, we can increase to the, a million times, 10 to the sixth power. Uh, this a tremendous increase of surface area can use uh, the platinum more effectively. But uh, all the catalyst, a uh, nano size catalyst, is if a deposit in a big clump, a big crunch, there's no use. Then we talk about the dispersion of the nano size catalyst. If all this, the nano size particle uh, without dispersion, they all uh, crowd into one crunch, then only effective um, nanoparticle is outskirt of the, uh, the particle because all the chemical like hydrogen, oxygen can only meet at the outskirt of the particle inside those particle inside uh, nano even is a nano size because the reactant kind of hard to get into it. so those particle is useless. So we had to disperse the, those particles. Uh, what do we disperse? We deposit the uh, platinum catalyst on the nano size carbon powder. The carbon powder somewhere around 50 to 150 nanometer. In this case, the individual particle was dispersed. So the reactants, the, uh, the, the chemical like hydrogen, oxygen can be uh, can be uh, diffused onto the surface, and then each particle can uh, start react, can increase the uh, uh, catalyst utilization rate. Why we use a carbon powder? Because the carbon the require for the solid dispersion, for the solid dispersion, we do, we need first is the electric conductivity because the electric current or the electron had to conduct through those solid substrate uh, uh, to the catalyst surface. So it had to be electric conductive. Second, also heavy corrode reduced is a chemical stable. Uh, of, of course, we can use platinum or gold or palladium, but that uh, lost the purpose we use uh, uh, nano size particle. Uh, the cheapest way to use is a carbon because the relative chemical stable and the lower cost and also can die electric current. So the, the substrate actually used is a nano size carbon powder or the particle for the dispersed nano uh, size uh, catalyst. Now the catalyst actually is a, um, a dispersed catalyst was coated on the the membrane as a catalyst layer. So this will form so-called membrane electro assembly. It's a com it composed uh, the proton exchange membrane as on the surface, uh, as a center, and then one side is a anode catalyst layer. And then from here, the hydrogen will be diffused from the outside and then through the pore, the pore in a in a catalyst lay, layer onto the catalyst surface, and then the reaction taking place, and then generate uh, electric electron current. The electron electron will conduct through the carbon powder outside the fuel cell, and then proton will be uh, transported through the um, porosity or the nano nanopore in a catalyst layer to the proton exchange membrane and go to the cathode, the cathode catalyst layer. And the cathode catalyst layer, the oxygen will be diffused um, through the pore into the catalyst layer, combined with the proton, and then the electron conduct through the carbon in the catalyst layer and then generate the water and then diffuse out. The, the in this uh, is a three layers MEA because composed of the anode catalyst layer, 
proton exchange membrane and the cathode cathode layer. This we call the three layer MEA membrane electrode assembly. And then in reality, we need a five, five layer uh, MEA. The five layer MEA is uh, we added uh, the gas diffusion layer. So the hydrogen ha had to diffuse through the uh, gas diffusion layer. We call the gas diffusion layer to the catalyst layer. And the electron had to be uh, conducted through the catalyst layer, through the gas diffusion layer, and uh, out to the outside, the fuel cell. So the gas diffusion layer, the GDL, had to be gas permeable. The gas had to be come through, so the porosity very high over the gas diffusion layer, and also had a conductive electric current, so, ele so it also had to be conductive. That's the same thing for the castle side. We had a castle gas diffusion layer. The oxygen will be diffused into the from the outside to, through the gas diffusion layer to the catalyst layer. And the current had to be conducted through the gas diffusion layer to the catalyst layer. And the water vapor had to be carried out through the gas diffusion layer. So on the castle side, it also had to be a gas permeable. So pore is very large and also electric conductive. In general, for the, uh, the catalyst layer, uh, the pore size somewhere around 50 to 200 nanometer. For the gas diffusion layer, it's much higher. It's somewhere around 5 to 20 micrometer, maybe a thousand times more, high, or maybe a hundred times much higher than the, uh, in a catalyst layer. Then why we need a, a gas diffusion layer? What is the function for those? Um, we, this is a five layer, uh, uh, five layer uh, is including the gas diffusion layer, anode catalyst, uh, pan fuel cell, cathode catalyst layer, and cathode gas diffusion layer. This is we call the five layer MEA. And why we need a gas diffusion layer? It's all, it's a, it's a serve as a mechanical support during the manufacture process because the uh, uh, and the catalyst layer and then the membrane, the thickness is about 25 micrometer. It's a very thin layer. Mechanical is very weak. And this gas diffusion layer is made of carbon paper. It's a, the thickness of this is somewhere around 350 micrometer to 450 micrometer, somewhere around that, the carbon paper. So it, the first is acting as a mechanical support. There's other things that increase the utilization of the catalyst layer. We can see by the following slide. Uh, on the left side, this that we think of that without a gas diffusion layer, we only show at the cat cathode or catalyst layer and a part of the proton exchange member as an example, as for the demonstration purpose. On the other side, also the same. Uh, because uh, over here we had to convert, com transport the oxygen to the cathode surface, so we need a uh, channel plate. The channel plate is a, a carbon material, the the, the conductive carbon material, and on the surface there has many channel, so oxygen can be flow to the uh, cathode layer through the carbon plate even a distribute and then electric current also can be carried through the channel plate to the cathode uh, catalyst layer otherwise there's no way to you can transfer the current electric conducting electric current and also transport the, cur the gas onto the cathode surface you need a, a solid plate and on the surface, there's a flow channel, so they can carry the the reactant, the, the gas phase, onto the catalyst layer. But there's a drawback without the, the GDL, because the oxygen can be diffused to the catalyst layer uh, uh, on the catalyst layer. But the problem is um, over here, the oxygen concentration is very high because uh, the oxygen can diffuse right directly. 
but around this region, the oxygen concentration very low. Over here, it's not, not in scale. Actually, the cathode layer is only 25 micrometer, and then the channel is a 1,000 micrometer. It's a one millimeter long. So actually, this is a very narrow alley, uh, a very narrow channel. The oxygen have it diffuse through over here the 25 micrometer through the 1,000 long the um, the channel into here. So actually, the carbon uh, oxygen concentration in this region is much lower than the oxygen concentration in this region. So from the oxygen concentration sense, um, the red area, actually the cathode utilization rate is very low because the uh, oxygen depleted. And also, if we think about the uh, electric conductivity, that sense, the electron had to flow through the uh, flow channel to the cathode layer. So it flows through uh, electron had to with um, current uh, generate uh, from the the catalyst layer had to flow through the from the channel to the catalyst layer. And um, over here is a very conductive in over here, but the electron the resistance is very high because you have to think about the, this about only 25 micrometer wide and but this one is a 1000 micrometer long so the electro resistance is very high so around this region actually the catalyst because of internal resistance the catalyst utilization rate is very low so in this case from the uh, current flow or the oxygen diffusion uh, without the catalyst, uh, the gas diffusion layer, there's a problem. So the flow channel, we need a gas diffusion layer so we can evenly distribute the oxygen, evenly distribute to the castle ca catalyst layer. And also the castle catalyst layer the, uh, can transfer the electron evenly to the castle catalyst layer. Over here, the five layer MEA, we need a microporous layer. We need a microporous layer. The reason we need a microporous layer is uh, uh, to keep the water inside the MEA, the key component. The microporous layer is uh, made of the carbon powder, the same carbon powder for the catalyst layer. But instead of had the catalyst, it's mixed with the PTFE, the uh, nephew, uh, the Teflon is a, a hydrophobic property. It's a contain about 23% uh, PTFE. So it's a hydrophobic will keep the water inside the catalyst layer. So whatever the water produced inside the catalyst layer will keep it inside because of microporous layer. But it conduct the electronic um, current so it's a conductive so the electron can flow in and out also is a porous material so hydrogen or the oxygen can be freely diffused in and out only the liquid water will be keep inside the microporous layer but because the uh, fuse operate in the 60 to 80 degree so some the water vapor can be diffused out why we need to do that? Because in that case, the the will keep the GDL relative dry, so the gas phase, the oxygen or hydrogen can diffuse freely and quickly into the catalyst layer. If the GDL was flooded with water, then the oxygen or the hydrogen diffusion become very difficult, and then the reaction will almost going to shut down. So this is a function for the microporous layer. So up to here, we talk about the, for the structure of the MEA, the basic structure, the key component of the single cell, including the, the anode, castle, and the membrane. 
for the anode itself, a composed of gas diffusion layer, micropolar layer, and the catalyst layer, the same as the gas the, on the cathode side. So this section, uh, we've been talking about uh, the key component in a fuel cell, a single cell. The next section, we'll talk about the peripheral, uh, the outskirts of the single cell, that including the flow channel, and play, uh, current collector, and such and so, so on.